Are you concerned that your machine isn't powerful enough to host a local large language model? No worries. In this video, I'll show you how to run a large language model while tapping into Google's powerful service. Here's what I'll be using. First off, there's Olama, a framework that lets me run various large language models directly on my machine. If you haven't got it yet, I'll leave a link in the description to guide you through the installation process. It's open source and super easy to set up. Next, you'll need Google Colab, a cloud-based platform where you can write and run Python code, as well as work with Jupyter Notebooks. To do this, you'll need a Google account, which I'm assuming you already have, so we won't be covering that in this video. To make your large language models run quickly, consider upgrading to a Colab Pro subscription, which provides access to powerful GPU servers. If you choose to use the free version, your LLMs will still run, but keep in mind that it won't be as efficient or fast. Also, be aware that free sessions are timed, and they'll time out after about two hours, which can be frustrating. Last but not least, you'll need to sign up for a free account with NGROC that gives your local web applications a public URL. I've included a link to NGROC in the video description, so be sure to check it out. However, we won't be going over the sign-up process in this video. Now, let's dive deeper into the setup. Olama will run simultaneously on both your local machine and Google Colab. You might know that Olama can be interacted with in two ways. Using a command line interface, or CLI, or via API calls. The CLI lets you use text-based commands to talk to Olama directly. For API calls, Olama sets up a local server at localhost port 11434. This means you can send HTTP requests and get a response. For our setup, we'll be using the second interaction method, making HTTP requests to Olama. In Google Colab, Olama runs within a containerized environment, making it inaccessible from your local machine. To resolve this, we'll use ngrok to tunnel the local Olama server address to the Internet, creating a stable public URL that you can access from your machine. Once we've done that, our local Olama installation will interact with this public URL. As a result, you'll be able to run Olama on Google's powerful GPUs instead of relying on your local machine. Now, let's consider the downsides of running Olama in this setup compared to running it locally on your machine. Firstly, running Olama through Google Colab and NGROC means that your interactions with LLMs will no longer be completely private. You'll need to trust both Google Colab and NGROC, which can see every HTTP request you make. This might not be ideal for those who value complete privacy. Secondly, there's a cost associated with this setup. As we discussed earlier, using Google Colab's powerful GPU runtimes requires an upgrade to a Colab Pro subscription. While this is still more affordable than some paid LLM subscriptions, it's an ongoing monthly expense that you'll need to factor into your budget. Personally, I have a MacBook Air with 8 GB of RAM. Although I can run Llama 3 on my local machine, every interaction almost maxes out my shared CPU-GPU and leaves me waiting for several seconds or even minutes for an answer. It's very frustrating. That's why I've decided to invest in the Colab Pro subscription, because it's still cheaper than buying a new MacBook. Ultimately, you'll need to weigh your options and decide what works best for you. Here's what you need to do to set up Olama with Google Colab. Log in to NGROC and get your authentication token and stable domain. Open a pre-prepared Jupyter Notebook on Colab, making sure you're logged in with your Google account. 
Copy and paste the NGROC authentication code into the Colab notebook. Execute the Jupyter notebook which will set up OLAMA on Colab and link it to the public stable NGROC URL. Connect your local OLAMA to the public NGROC URL. And finally, run OLAMA. Let's go step by step through the setup process. To begin, access NGROC by logging in and navigating to the domain section. If you don't already have a static domain, you can create one. I'll provide more information on how to do this in the video description. This step is optional, but if you choose not to establish a stable domain, a new URL will be generated each time you run the installation script on Google Colab. While this is OK, having a consistent URL that doesn't change can be more convenient. The choice is yours. You'll also need your unique authentication token. This private key or password grants you secure access to your NGROC account from external locations such as Google Colab. Please ensure it remains confidential and is not shared with anyone else. To get your authentication token, simply click on Your Auth Token located on the left-hand side of the NGROC interface. From there, copy the token that appears at the top of the page. Next up, open this Jupyter Notebook in Google Colab. Just make sure you're logged in with your Google account first. This notebook is based on Olama's original script, but I've made some tweaks to make it work better. I'll walk you through it in a minute. But you can find the link to this page in the video description. Now you need to add the NGROC authentication code to your Google Colab environment. To do this, navigate to the Secrets section within Colab and click on Add New Secret. Give the authentication code a name. In our case, we'll use NGROC auth token, then paste the code into the value field. The next step is to run this Jupyter notebook. One method is to download the notebook from my tutorial page and then upload it to Colab. You'll find the link in the description. Make sure this notebook is authorized to use your authentication code. Before you run it, ensure you're connected to a runtime environment at the top right corner of the screen. As I'm on a paid plan, I'll opt for a GPU environment. Once you're connected, you can execute the entire notebook by clicking Runtime and then Run All. However, in this video, I'll be running each cell individually to provide a step-by-step -step walkthrough of the notebook while explaining every detail along the way. The first cell in this notebook executes an installation script provided by Olama, which installs Olama within our Google Colab environment. As I run this cell by clicking play, you'll see that it installs Olama into a directory called user local bin within the Colab environment. The next cell retrieves the authentication code stored in the secret section of our Google Colab environment, which is the same name we assigned to the secret entry earlier. Please make sure that you've named it correctly before proceeding. The third cell sets the stage for the final step. It defines two key functions, run, which executes commands asynchronously, and a second function that leverages predefined Python modules to efficiently handle large datasets. This preparation is important for the next cell, where we want to start Olama and establish a connection to the NGROC URL simultaneously. At the end of this cell, you'll see that I'm executing the run command by logging into NGROC using the authentication code retrieved earlier. The final cell brings everything together by starting up the Olama server within our Google Colab environment using the Olama serve command. Simultaneously, it connects the local host URL generated by the Olama server on port 11434 to the stable URL retrieved earlier from NGROC. 
This is where you'll need to insert the name of your stable domain from ngrok. As I mentioned earlier, this step is optional and primarily for convenience. If you prefer not to use it, simply uncomment the alternative code and comment out this line to have ngrok generate a random URL instead. As we execute this final cell, the output will confirm that a tunnel has been started mapping the localhost URL from Olama to your stable URL or the randomly generated URL by ngrok if you chose not to use a stable one. Let's test this by clicking on the provided URL. As you can see, it indicates Olama is running. With this public URL, we now have a way to access and run Olama from within our Google Colab environment. Let's copy the generated URL from the notebook's output and open a command line tool like the terminal app on Mac. Next, we'll configure our local Olama installation to communicate with the instance hosted on Colab. To do this, execute the following command. Export Olama host. Equal sign and then paste the URL you retrieved from the notebook. If you're using the stable ngrok URL, this command will remain the same, so you can store it for future reference and copy it whenever you want to run Olama via Colab. However, if you're not using a stable URL, you'll need to copy the new URL from your notebook each time, as it will change every time. We are now ready to run Olama. In the same terminal window, let's start by running Olama list. You'll notice that the list of models is empty because our Colab installation of Olama is fresh and hasn't been populated with any models yet. To download a model such as Llama3, simply type in the command Olama run Llama3 and it will quickly download and start up the model. As you interact with Olama locally, you'll notice something happening in the background on Colab. Once Llama 3 is up and running, we can begin interacting with it. You'll see that the interaction is incredibly fast because we're now leveraging the power of Google servers through our Colab environment. Now let's talk about day-to-day -day usage. When you're finished with Olama, don't forget to disconnect and delete runtime in Google Colab to avoid wasting GPU resources, especially if you're on a paid plan. To restart Olama on Google Colab again, it's a straightforward process. Simply run the Jupyter Notebook, then open a local terminal and export the Olama host variable with the generated link from the notebook's output. If you prefer not to download Olama models every time you start the notebook, you can have them installed directly on your Google Drive. I've provided an additional Jupyter notebook in the description for that purpose. However, I found that running Olama with models stored on Google Drive results in slower performance and occasional connectivity issues with ngrok. Therefore, I prefer to download models fresh each time, which usually takes just a few seconds, thanks to Google's powerful servers. The choice is yours. If, like me, you enjoy using Olama alongside its companion open source UI, Olama Web UI, which offers a chat GPT-like interface for interacting with Olama models, there is one additional step you may need to take. If you're not already familiar with Olama Web UI, I recommend taking a look at the video I created that provides guidance on how to install and use it effectively. That additional step involves installing Open Web UI into a Docker container using the URL provided by ngrok. A stable ngrok URL comes in handy here as it allows you to only set up the installation once and then start or stop the Docker container whenever you run your Jupyter Notebook on Colab. If you don't have a stable URL, you'll need to repeat this step each time. You can simply execute this command in your terminal. 
This will set up Open Web UI on the localhost URL, which you can then add to your browser's favorites and open each time Collab is running. Thank you so much for watching, and I hope you'll join me soon in my next video.